spoiler alert, I'm giving out the answers to problems 8 and 9 on this one. So, on number 8, all you do is fill in the blanks here. For inductance, you want to say blank leads blank by 90 degrees. And for the capacitance, you want to say blank leads blank by 90 degrees. And remember our friend Eli the Iceman to figure out what goes in each of those blanks. On problem number 9, the voltage that is given is in a cosine form with no phase. So this is the part that is given for the problem. That means that you can come right over here and write in V sub L as 10 volts because that's the peak value right there. And the phase is 0 degrees since there is no extra term. And if you um, look at this uh, on a imaginary versus real axis plot, because that angle is 0 degrees, this is going to be only a real number. That means that the answer is just, in complex form, at least 10 volts. Doing the same thing for the impedance of the inductor. Recall from class that the impedance of an inductor is equal to omega L in polar form um, at an angle of 90 degrees. So go ahead and calculate this thing that we call the um, in inductive reactance. Uh, X sub L is equal to omega L. Take the omega, which is right there, and take the L, which is given in the problem. I forget what it is, but make sure you convert it over to Henry's and not millihenries, and get a number that's in ohms right there. All you have to do after that is translate that over here and have a number in ohms right there at an angle of 90 degrees. And because this is along the uh, vertical axis, that's going to be in the complex way um, a number in j, where j is the square root of minus 1. So don't forget to put numbers there and there. To find the current, what you do is use our Ohm's law. V is equal to IZ. That's Ohm's law for AC circuits. And then solve for I. And so you get V sub L over that. So take the problem, take the part of the problem that you have already solved and plug it in. We can do this in polar form first. So we get 10 volts at an angle of 0 degrees divided by some number in ohms at an angle of 90 degrees from up here. And we're going to get some number in amps at an angle of 0 minus 90. So that means that what the answer that goes here is a number in amps at an angle of minus 90 degrees. And because that's allow along the negative um, imaginary axis, that's going to be some number in amps um, times j with a minus sign out here. All you have to do after that is take this number that you have here, put it right there. Take the um, omega that we have over here. Recall that frequency is unaffected um, by capacitors or inductors or even resistors in a circuit. So that's going to be 2,000 pi radians per second. It appears that the only reason we needed that value is to find the inductive reactance in ohms. Make sure you multiply that times t, and the angle that we have for that is minus 90 degrees, and we're done. On the second page where it says continued, let's see if I can figure out how to quickly go about this. The peak values that we had was uh, 10 volts and some other number right there. So we'll just go in here and say 10 volts minus 10 volts. And then we'll have our positive number in amps from the previous blank. I'm going to let you figure out what those were. So positive and negative values from the peak currents. OK, and then. Alright, and then recall that this is what we had given in the problem. 
and that is omega. So up here we can say omega is equal to 2 pi f is equal to 2 pi over capital T. This means that capital T is equal to um, 2 pi divided by omega and since omega is equal to 2000 pi radians per second as given in the problem that's going to be 2 pi divided by 2000 pi radians per second this up here is radians that gives us one millisecond pi's cancel out, two's cancel out, we get one over a thousand and then we have, look at this, the units here comes out in seconds, one millisecond. That makes it easy to label this. And since um, current and voltage have the same